Uh, good afternoon, my name is Jamie and this is Jose, and we're going to present to you the Jinai robot. Uh, our intent for this robot is to design a modular robot that can be expanded for a multitude of different purposes. It will be sold as a platform to many different industries where accessories can be added to uh, meet their, suit their needs. Um, again, our original project was that. Uh, we met it by, we first wanted it to follow people. So we employed several ultrasound sensors to triangulate the target, and the robot followed to them. Um, now our new goal is to just entirely show the modularity. So we switched applications just to show what else it could be used for. Um, we're going to tell you about development of the new task and our future goals for the robot. The original goal, again, was um, to have the modular platform follow and serve an elderly person. The robot carried pills, a pill tray to deliver on a schedule, and again, it used an ultrasound system to follow the elderly person around the home. Next slide, please. Uh, here is a description of the ultrasound triangulation technique that we use. We um, place two ultrasound sensors on the platform at a fixed distance. Measure, each one would measure the distance between itself and an emitter on the target, and then figure out the direction and distance from the robot to that target and approach them if the threshold is too far. This is, uh, again, how we did it. We used um, an ultrasound developed by Parallax. You have an emitter receiver pair. Uh, ultrasound is sent out at one time. It's received at a second time and using the time of flight. Uh, the ultrasound can tell you how far your target is. This is, um, we had to test that system repeatedly to ensure that it would work properly. We, uh, as you can see in this figure, we place the sensors at the same distance as they would be on the platform, and we move the emitter to several different positions to simulate what it would be like for the robot to follow the target. Then uh, we compared those results to, we measured the distances and we compared them to the calculated distance by the microcontroller. Um, we noticed that there are several problems with uh, coming too close or going too far, so there's an optimal threshold, but overall it was successful. This is the final prototype for that segment of our project, the first application of our modular platform. And here you can see the two ultrasound sensors spaced evenly. This is the actual device. And here's a video demonstrating the robot following the target. Again, initially our, our goal was to serve the elderly. So here we have a representative elderly person and the robot is following them around as they would through a home in order to service them. It's carrying a pill tray and a uh, heart monitor, not heart monitor, but a um, blood pressure diagnostic. Next slide, please. Pass the floor to Jose, and he's going to tell you a little bit about our second goal to demonstrate the modularity of the platform. So, as we mentioned, the goal for Janai is that it must be a modular robotic platform. So, in order to demonstrate this, we needed to have Janai perform a task which was completely different from what it would do before. Because we have to show that it can be configured in many different ways and be capable of doing many different tasks. So, we came up with a new task. We switched from our elderly assistance purposes to something a little more militant. So we gave him a completely different appearance to complement his new task. And um, we gave him the capacity to detect targets, and we armed him with a weapon, and gave him the capacity to attack targets. So the purposes for this, as we're going to demonstrate initially, it's a novelty room security item. So you leave it inside your room, and it protects your room from snooping relatives and things of the sort. However, Further developing this, it can be used for paintball and airsoft games, which are military-style games where players team up and uh, do battle with each other, so the robot can add another element to the game. But further, it can be used for military and SWAT training, where you set up hostage situations where the robots will take the place of enemy soldiers or hostage takers, and you can use it to train your soldiers and your SWAT teams. Then beyond that, we could use it as an actual house security robot or business security robot where it would dissuade people from intruding by attacking them with maybe a stronger weapon than what's mounted for this configuration. So 
we looked through some existing products. We found that most of them do not follow an intruder. They're generally novelty items as the first two. The final one is actual a real security robot. Most of them are very effective. As you can see in the image, it's using a very small net. This is mostly for prom promotional purposes. If he wanted to, he could stand up and just walk away. So it's not very effective. So I'll pass on to Jamie for the project plan. Okay. The plan for our project. We um, initially we had to decide exactly what we're going to do, which would be for the robot to monitor its surroundings and when the surrounding is changed, the indication is that somebody is in the room moving around. Uh, we had to develop a logic system for what the robot should do if those signals are tripped. We had to, of course, construct a prototype with a little bit of handiwork, uh, testing, debugging, always a procedure in any kind of programming, and finally, the robot would be completed and ready to fire. Uh, the new task. What we wanted to make sure that the robot did was uh, correctly respond to the stimuli. It needed to turn in the direction where it detected the target and accurately uh, fire upon them. And now I'd like to introduce to you the new, as opposed to the uh, preceding Here you can see um, an image of the new robot. Uh, we made it run a little bit faster. For the elderly purposes, it was to move slow and uh, accommodate the elderly person. It didn't need a lot of power to catch up. Um, so now we made it a bit faster. Again, we uh, changed the appearance to suit its purpose a little bit better and made it a little more dangerous. So, uh, without further ado, Here's the new version of the robot. Before, we had a, a soft blue felt cover to, to be for an elderly person. Now we have a, a solid black to be more intimidating or even um, stealthy. Yes, so, so you might not be able to see it in a warehouse setting like for the uh, military application. You can see the uh, airsoft BB gun rifle on top. And um, we had, had to add an additional servo to flip the switch to turn it on. Um, this also demonstrates that the appearance can be easily changed as well. Any kind of coating, you can make it anything you like. If you wanted to put a green camo on it, you could do that as well for making a forest setting, anything like that. Uh, Jose is going to come in and tell you a little bit about the weaponry. Alright, so for this purpose, we needed a weapon that would dissuade somebody, but of course not be lethal. So for these purposes, we've used an airsoft rifle. It uses soft plastic BBs. They do sting somewhat, but they're not lethal. They're not going to severely harm your relatives or anything of the sort. So this gun is fully automatic. It's driven by a DC motor. And we have our servos con uh, controlled by an IL port. And what it does is it pushes down on this button right here, and it fires the gun. So, um, in order to target, we again resorted to the ultrasound sensor. So there's one mounted on the side, on the left, one on the right, and one on the front. Though not at the moment we don't have the right one mounted. However, what it does is as a person walks into the room, they are going to be triggered, and then the robot knows someone's there, so it will face them. So, what's the next one? So, the logic sort of works like this. As you leave your room, you flick the switch and turn the robot on. So now it's, it gives you 30 seconds to exit the room and the robot is not armed. When you walk in, you have another 30 seconds after the text to turn it off. However, if you're an intruder and you don't know about the robot, then you don't know to turn it off. So it will begin attacking. Okay, and some of the challenges we had with this was target detection and of course motion response. So we had to continuously calibrate our ultrasound sensors in order to make sure that the robot would detect the person within the desired interval and face them properly in order to attack. Then also getting our firing response, everything to work properly, and finally modifying our airsoft rifle. This has a trigger mechanism with a safety on it, which I removed and modified the electric motor by removing the switch for it, which was originally activated by the trigger. So 
now it just has leads welded and soldered onto the motor and controlled by a switch on the outside, which we control with a servo which can be pressed and also allows you to have one more way to deactivate the weapon. If you can't reach the off switch for the robot attack, you can push the button, turn off the gun, and then safely turn the robot off. So here's a demonstration of our robot in action. With an unfortunate target. Safety first, and notice the safety goggles. Yes. <laughs> if I walked into a room and I was fired upon like that, I would be immediately deterred and I would try to escape as fast as possible. Here you can see again the robot successfully acknowledges the person tripping the, sen the sensor and turning to fire upon the target. Very painful testing, I assure you. Yes. <laughs> and finally, this is the this uh, sign here is representative of the entire concept. If you intrude upon somebody's privacy, you will be uh, dealt with. Thank you very much for your attention.